I mean, I've always been the type of person as a player that I, you know, I just like to, to like try to learn the spirit of a song or a guitar solo or something more than the actual, like, I have to learn every single note and know it exactly. Yeah. But it is super fun. They like see what the person actually did. You know what I mean? And then, you, that- can, then you can mess it up in your own way. Any guitar our player has their little subtleties and nuances with, with every single one of them so far has been eye opening in, in yeah. just the little things. And that's the stuff you miss, like when you're just figuring it out by ear, you know, that's the stuff that's harder to kind of figure out or even like watching, you know, I've sort of my, the way that I figure stuff out in the modern age is, is a few different things. I listen to the record, whatever it is, and just try to see if I can figure it out from that. I'll look for um, video footage on YouTube of whoever it is actually playing it live, if you can find it, and just kind of see where their hands are at. And then, you know, it's it's 2023. There's like almost any song you could think of. There's like a hundred different people on YouTube explaining how to play it, but they all explain it. You know, there's a lot of people that get pretty close, but it's not like exactly right. And, you know, it, it, exactly right doesn't really even matter to me that much, but it is fun to sit and, and see um like how people really did this these little movements you know that make a that, that, that it's like you don't quite register but you're you, you feel it in some weird way um i mean i've always been the type of person as a player that i you know i just like to, to like try to learn the spirit of a song or a guitar solo or something more than the actual like i have to learn every single note and know it exactly yeah. but it is super fun they like see what the person actually did you know what i mean and then, you, that- can, then you can mess it up in your own way was that a progression? Like, I remember when I was a young guitar player, I was obsessed with learning everything note for note. And I would spend like an hour being like, what is that one little thing? And then as I've gotten older, I've been like, I don't really care as much as long as I kind of get the feeling of it or the vibe of it. Like, was that a yeah, progression yeah, yeah. for you? Or you, like at some point you're like, whatever, like, let me just play the feel of this and we're good here. I mean, I'll, I was never much somebody that would learn anything note for note when I was real young. But the, the sort of the turning point for me was when we started doing those Me First in the Gimme Gimme's records, because we would sit there and figure out these songs, you know, there's all cover songs and we would figure out these songs. And I was really stuck in like, this is how the song goes. You Not so much note for note, but like, this is the structure of the song and it has to be played this way because this is how Billy Joel played it. And we have to do it, you know, in the exact same structure. And it was really Fat Mike that would just always be like, no, we don't. <laughs> we can do it however we want. You know, we can change the chords and we would, you know what I mean? And that was like, that kind of changed my, my um, you know, my my perception of like, you know, it's it's... It's fun to try to do stuff close to the record, but it's also fun to just just mess it up. And, and you know, in a in a in a loud bar room environment, and you're like nobody cares as long as they're having yeah, a good right. time. You know, there, there was, you know, you played in Taylor Hawkins, like heavy metal band or he had like a shred band. Oh, Chevy metal. Yeah. Chevy metal. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there was a moment where I guess you were like you felt like your heavy metal chops weren't up to snuff or whatever. So you took some lessons oh, yeah. from Paul Gilbert. I did. Yeah, and I did. What? First of all, I feel this way, too, because I feel like I'm a competent guitar player for what it's worth. But like I do, I'm not comfortable playing Van Halen tunes or shredding or doing any of that. So I relate well, to you on this. But what does well, Paul that, teach you? What does Paul Gilbert teach you? Um, He God, I would have to go back I, I, and, and look at what those lessons were, although I don't think I had like a video that was like way before Zoom and all that stuff. So I don't have any record of it. He taught me, you know, like. Like, you're right. It, it was it was at that point when I was playing in Chevy Metal and for the first time, like, I never learned Van Halen songs and, and that type of stuff when I was a kid because I couldn't, I just couldn't play like that. And and I, you know, to be perfectly frank, still can't play like that. Yeah. I but I wanted... as I got older, I would just magically know how to play those songs. And then that never yeah. happened. <laughs> no, what happens is you get older and you just magically care less about nailing it. Yes, um, that... <laughs> And, 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 you know, somebody, a player like Eddie Van Halen, it's like nobody can really do what he he did so you, like, that's the classic example like just get into the wheelhouse and the spirit maybe look where his hands are and try to just try to do something that's kind of high speed and um uh and so that's what i was doing but you're right like i was i was i was like i, I periodically go through phases like this where like i'm gonna learn you know how to really like do like crazy alternate picking super fast stuff and i just i would shed on that stuff for a little bit and never get it really down and then kind of go you get care you know 
you just get busy with something else and you forget for a while and then you come back to it. It's kind of like the same way I periodically sit down and try to learn how to play pedal steel and I'll sit there and I'll work through a couple things and kind of get it going and, and not really going because that's also like impossible. Um, and then you just get, you know, if I'm like, if Foo Fighters are busy, if, um, if, uh, if, if I'm busy with my, you know, solo stuff, if I'm busy with my podcast, if I'm like writing songs, then I just like, that part of my brain shuts down and and I just focus on other stuff. But yeah, it, my main memory of what, of taking, I can't remember if it was one or two lessons from, from Paul Gilbert was that he was just really cool, man. He was a really nice guy. Um, I'd never met him before. You know, he's obviously a phenomenal guitar player and, um, and I probably should have stuck with that. Maybe I'd have better chops now. <laughs> But when you learn like a Van Halen song, are you learning it with like a slow downer and are you doing it by ear or are you watching a YouTube video and seeing what a million other people have done with say eruption or whatever it is? All of the above. Yeah. I mean, I love the, I have that amazing slower downer app. Uh, um, and I've had that for years and I love that. The problem with slowing stuff down for rock music, it's great now because you can find isolated tracks. Um, on you know out on the internet and and that's if you can find an isolated track or something that that helps a lot but when you're slowing down like a like an ozzy osbourne song you know and trying to figure out a randy Rhodes thing first off those solos are like probably you know triple tracked or something so there's like you've got all these you know they're not exactly perfect things lining up and when you slow that down it starts to create these weird sounds that almost make it more confusing in a way and, and you have the 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 music that it sitting over which is also starts to get all and like you know that makes it and it just turns into this sort of soupy sludge you know what i mean so yeah if you can if you can find um the uh the isolated tracks that's the best you know it's it's a real it's randy Rhodes. that's the hardest one because there's so little footage of him playing those songs and a lot of those songs they probably never played live off those those two albums that he did and and so it's you you can't find a lot of footage of of him actually playing live to see where he's where his hands are and it's richter fast and like i said triple tracked or whatever quadruple tracked and, um and they're all kind of varying a little bit so it's 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 hard to know like exactly what he did but there's some folks out there on the internet that get pretty close probably and you know well, a lot of that stuff yeah, yeah. for me is like it's like you basically have to like relearn to play guitar and i'm just too old and set in my ways to do that you know as much as i would love to i know this i feel like i'm never going to be a great shredder and then i see someone do it and i go oh god i i, I should work on that because how great would it be to have 25 percent of that but then it's like right. you never get it yeah well it reminds me of like i was um a few years ago i was uh i was in a swim group here at home you know it's like a swim training class i like to swim and swim laps and it's yeah. great and i was talking to the coach because everybody in the in in those classes was like uh people that do uh triathlons and i was i'd never done one i still never done one and um and i was talking to him about it and i was like oh man that sounds fun i'd really like to try that and he goes i remember the coach just goes yeah but you know you know look at all these people like are you really like you can invest that much time to what be like the 300th guy in the triad like who cares and that's kind of how i feel about learning <laughs> to shred it's like am i really gonna invest all that time in that to get and i don't know man i just i do what i do and it, it's it's worked out <laughs> yeah is there a frontier that you think about like maybe it is the shred space or are you like this i got a bag of tricks and then like that's great oh no i mean love learning so that's like why i'm starting this new show i love learning stuff i feel like um for all for like you could sit down and woodshed on like 50 ripping licks and you're gonna maybe really really internalize one or two of them and actually incorporate it into what you do at least for me you know maybe that's not for anybody else but for me you know i'll sit and i'll watch like you know i've got like a giant stack of instructional dvds and stuff and um and work through some of that stuff and you'll work through a whole dvd and you'll really only you know it's like only a couple things really make it into into what you do and i'm the type of player that if i don't just do it over and over and over and over a million million times then i don't really learn it so i have to figure out a way to actually get it into my playing 
Um, and then, th- you know, little bits and bobs stick along the way. So, I mean, I love, like, don't get me wrong. I love always kind of learning and always evolving. And I feel like, you know, I'm a much player, more well-rounded guitar player now than I was when I was 18 or something. But I can't play like I did when I was 18 because I just don't have that spark anymore you know what i mean like yeah. it's i'm a different thing now than i was i'm a different thing than i was 10 years ago or 20 years ago you know what i mean and i and i can't do i couldn't comfortably go play a set with no use for a name right now i w- could probably work up to it but i don't have that coordination anymore because you know what i mean i just haven't done it for so long like that would i would have to learn it again you know 